I'm Matt Ellison, founder and CEO of Survive It, and welcome to Fearless Friday. Today, we're honored to have a very special guest, Dr. Fred Ashbury, and he has a remarkable set of credentials, but what's most important is his knowledge and work with regards to precision medicine. So I'd like to introduce Dr. Ashbury today. Dr. Ashbury, thank you for being with us. Well, thank you very much for inviting me, Matt. I appreciate it. I do feel as a patient, I, I mean, I, I, that's the way I live and the way I face cancer myself is I take responsibility. I become engaged. I, I set up Google alerts and, and, and I read and I learn as much as I can about my cancer. Um, in fact, it was just a little bit over a year ago that I had terrible progression on, uh, on a new drug that I had been taking and it wasn't working right. And um, I was in the hospital and I even had uh, doctors come in and, and talk to my wife and I about hospice. And um, I, I said, no, I'm not ready for hospice. Um, I was aware of a drug that wasn't approved yet because of my Google alerts and because I was actively engaged. And, but it was in clinical trial form. Um, I didn't have access to it. The trials were not open at that time. But I did know about expanded access through compassionate use. And so I did ask my, this was at a community cancer center. I asked my doctor to apply for compassionate use of this particular drug that I needed. And they did so. Um, and I was, you know, a lot of people think, well, that's gonna take a long time to get approval. I was on that drug within 10 days after seeking approval to my doctor. Um, can you explain a little bit about expanded access and, and compassionate use and why that is so important for people to know and at least have that in their back pocket. I think in a lot of cases uh, where there are, are novel agents that are being developed, new drugs that are being developed and might be in clinical trials, uh, it's good to seek the advice of your oncologist if your options um, have run out, if you will, for uh, as a result of developing resistance to the current medication that you've been given. Uh, however, that's not the only option that exists for patients, as you've mentioned. If the trial isn't available to you in that cancer center and you're not able to go to the cancer center where that trial is being offered, uh, ask your oncologist and your oncologist will likely get the assistance of her, his pharmacist, to reach out to the drug company uh, and to seek support from the drug company for compassionate use of that drug so that you can in fact get access to that drug. Uh, this happens a lot more than people may understand, probably because they're not aware of it, they don't ask for it, but I can count a dozen times in the last two weeks I know of patients that have been able to get access to the drug because they've gone forward to their oncologist and said, is there a compassionate use option for me and what needs to happen to follow through? It usually means filling out some forms where the oncologist has to explain the cancer, the treatments that have been given up to that point in time, why she or he is recommending this drug. And it's possible that in the case of the pharmaceutical company that might be uh, uh, developing that drug, that they'll seek additional information too, want to review information about the patient because they want the, the option to be offered in a situation where it's fair to the patient, where she or he has the most possible benefit from that drug. But to your point, this doesn't often take weeks and weeks or months to get done. It can take days or a couple of weeks to get done uh, as long as people invest the time on it. And I think, uh, again, my experience in the community setting is uh, less are familiar about doing this, fewer patients are familiar about doing this, and we need to make that message clear and strong for them. And that in the community setting, because you often shop with your oncologist in the same places, or you could see them on the street, or you meet them someplace, there's a different kind of relationship that's possible. And I think that those folks would, uh, would work hard on your behalf if they know that, that you're interested in pursuing that. I think sometimes too, oncologists may feel that 
you know, by offering up these options, maybe they're building our hopes up beyond what is reasonable. However, I, I think that's not their decision to make. I think it's a conversation between the oncologist and the patient about what the goals of treatment are and what these other drugs that might be available can do in response to those goals, and then roll up your sleeves and do the work. I agree with that entirely, um, especially the last statement about the oncologists making that decision on their own that they didn't want to get, you know, provide false hope. I hear about that often. And um, it just really angers me because that just, that decision is not theirs. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, there are so many people that we've mentored that have been there in their final days of life and they weren't, now they aren't well enough to get on this other treatment plan and it's too late. And they're in their final days of life and regret and there can't be anything worse. And I know firsthand, if I know that I have exhausted every opportunity available to me, and I'm in my final days of life, I'm ready to go in peace. You know, I'm a very strong faith. I've done everything I can here on earth. I've tried to, tried to heal my body as best I know, together with my medical team. And now it's time for me to go, and I, I go in peace. But it's the regret thing that that, that is the most fearful and stressful thing that we all, we all fear that would happen. And so it is really, really important. Dr. Ashbury, we would like to thank you for being with us today. You've, um, you're just a wealth of information and we're honored that you were able to take the time to talk to us today. So thank you very much. Well, thank you. I'm humbled by the opportunity, honestly, and I, I appreciate this chance to speak with you and any who are watching. Take care and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. And I want everyone to know, I say this at closing all the time, but Survive It is your organization. We are survivors helping patients, caregivers helping caregivers, and everybody helping each other. That's what we're all about. So don't ever feel that you have to face this alone. There are many people that have walked before you and they can provide very valuable advice to you and want to do so. They feel better in doing that. So always reach out to us anytime for any reason at info at surviveit.org. Until next time, I'm Matt Ellison. Stay strong and live fearless.